All right, guys, welcome to the Hunting Dog Public Podcast. I'm your host, Cody Moreland, and today we're talking hog dogs, or, or technically, what would you call them, Mr. Randy? Bay dogs or hog dogs? He's a competition bay dog. He's a competition bay dog, Mr. Randy Durrell with Top Gun Kennels. How are you, Mr. Randy? I'm doing fine. Doing fine. Beautiful day today. I got you. It's raining here, so at least it's sunny somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's pretty good over here. We're, I'm in southeast Texas. Uh, just left uh, Exxon Mobil here in Beaumont and uh, headed north to uh, Top Gun Headquarters in Coons, Texas. Top Gun Headquarters. So you have Top Gun Kennels. How long have you yes, had sir. that Top Gun Kennels established? Uh, it's 20, uh, 20, end of 2017, 2018. And, uh, man, it kind of... Got kicked off with, uh, I bred a litter of puppies and, uh, I, you know, like all of them were really doing well. You know, they were all, you know, right there on the cuff of band apart. They were paying perfect scores, two minutes. So I, I had to, in, I entered like all seven of them in the competition and I had not named a single dog and I'm just like kind of scrambling for names. So I just went through all the Top Gun call signs with uh, Maverick, Goose, Hollywood, Viper, Charlie, uh, you know. Yeah. And uh, I've never been, I've, I've always, honestly, I, I, like every, prior to, to me having Top Gun, I've, I just went under my name. And I kind of laughed at all those guys with the kill name. I'm like, man, this is, that's, that's kind of taking it, that's taking it a little too far. But here I am. Uh with Top Gun Kennels now, because I was like, I, I'm not going to do that. But when I named them all that, and then uh, Goose emerged as what he is, I, it was just kind of like I had to call him. I had to, I had to, I had to come up with something. So that's yeah. what I did. I just came up and said, Yeah, well, I'm Top Gun. Well, <laughs> everything I got named after the Top Gun call sign. In the in the Bay Dog pen, Top Gun's known, huh? Uh, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021 kennel of the year uh four four straight kennel of the year uh it's not looking good for me this year oh shoot i got a freaking phone call i don't know how to stop that Just know, there we go uh i don't know how i don't i don't think it's looking for me good this year uh as far as the kennel and man it's just been you know a run of bad luck uh at the end of last season, I, right after Uncle Earl's, uh, in 2020, no, 2021, I'm sorry, uh, my number two dog, Crook, he passed away. He had cancer. Well, he was, uh, 10, he was 10 years old. And man, uh, Crook, Crow, in the year, the year before that, Crow was the reserve world champion. He was the number two dog. I owned the number one and the number two dog from, from that year, you know. Crow had uh, just came off of a second place finish at Uncle Earl's, and within two weeks was dead. Mm. You know, I mean, he was able to go out and perform as sick as he was, and I, honestly, I had no idea he had cancer. It was like after the show, he just kind of had a, a like this knot emerged on his nose, and uh, we went to the vet a couple times. It didn't, it, you know, for about two weeks or about a week and a half, it didn't seem as though it was cancer uh, because his blood cell count, you know, it was high, it was elevated, but wasn't wasn't elevated enough to be cancer. At least that's what my veterinarian thought. And then yeah. after some 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 MRI uh, like X-ray stuff of his nose, man, and it, like within like three days, he could see this major deterioration of the platelets in his nose. He's like. That has to be cancer. So, uh, sure enough, they sent the, they sent it off to a lab, came back cancerous, and the dog wasn't eating. He had, he had lost. I mean, he was just a drawn up version of himself. I wasn't going to let him suffer. So they had to, the vet had to put him down then. And, uh, that's a tough situation uh, there. Yeah, yeah, especially like, you know, he was, he, at the time, he was the, you know, I, I, he was, he was actually beating Goose. He was leading the, the, the world championship standings and ended up finishing fourth that year. And he only competed half the year. Well, still, 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 was, still, still ended up finishing fourth place. Uh, you know, uh, 
I don't know if you know Pat Lewin too well, but he was a real big fan of Crow, and man, he he made he made a, he made a pretty big mockery out of that. He's like, you know, y'all got. He said he said if, he, if he, he laughed, he said if he had told him back, I'd be cooling because y'all y'all lost to a dead dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty bad. Pat, yeah. Pat's, a, Pat's a little outspoken, and, and uh, he says what he thinks, you know. And, and uh, sometimes it's funny, and uh, sometimes it's a little bit too true. Well, truth hurts <laughs> a lot of times. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so, so, like I said, for the guys that I'm sure we're going to post this, though there'll be a lot of people in the hog dog world that'll listen to the or the bay pen world that'll listen to this, but. We're mostly a tree dog podcast. So for the guys that don't know, what is Uncle Earl's considered? I know it's a big competition. Is that the biggest one that there is or Yes. Uncle Earl's is uh is like the Daytona five hundred. It's uh it's like uh Cheyenne for rodeo. It's uh it's the Mecca for Hall Bay. Um it's the Super Bowl, you know. Um yeah. it's the second show, it's the second Kind of, you know, like like uh, the Daytona 500 is always the first show for NASCAR. Mm-hmm. Like uh, for, for for Winfield, uh, uh, Uncle Earl is the second show of the series. Uh, it goes in it's, it's in Winfield, Louisiana. Uh, it is probably the largest field trial. I mean, I don't care what you talk about. I mean, if you if you talk about anything, coon hunting, bird hunting, I don't know of anything that is a week long and has you know, well over 800 entries. Well, it, it's it's a it's a major event. There's thousands of dogs. There's people camping, vendors everywhere. Uh, some of the best food you're ever going to eat is right there. I mean, it, it's like it's like the fair come to town. Uh, I, I want to say that Winfield, uh, the, the population quadruples uh, that during that week of uh, of, uh, of Uncle Earl's the hog dog trials. Dang. It's, a, it's, a, it's a real big deal. So, so about and, uh, what time of the year is that? That's the end of March. It's uh, usually somewhere around March the twentieth, all the way it runs up to the end. It starts. Uh, it, it starts on Monday and it ends on Sunday. Um. Uh, well, okay. Well, let's go with this route. When does ho- the hog baying competitions? What? When do they start and end throughout the year? Well, you got you got a show that's going to come up in Downsville in January. Uh, usually, it's like uh, kind of early January. Then you got the the May, I'm sorry, the March show in Winfield uh, comes in to May show uh, back in Downsville, and then you have uh, they'll do a they, they do a, a, a summertime shootout. It's a one day bay. It's a, just a two dog event. And uh, they kind of do it like a team roping. They, uh, uh, you pick a partner and you draw a partner. So uh, it's kind of like uh, you, you'll get a lot of of of, uh, of uh, just uh, what's the what's the word? It's um, a lot of entries. I mean, yeah, you you get a lot of entries because you got people that are out there like saying, you know, there's people that want to run with. You know, they, they they might get a shot at running with Rango or Goose or oh, or, it's like uh, a random draw. Yeah, so so you get to pick your own partner, you get to pick your team. It's like a it's a high stakes six hundred dollar uh, entry. Uh, you pick you you pick one partner and then you draw another. Uh, this year uh, they did it in July, and uh, Goose and Derail ended up winning it. Uh, but I, I picked Goose, and then we drew another partner, and my 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 draw partner actually called out. Just uh, you know, sheer bad luck, but uh, we were looking good until then, and then uh, Goose and Derail won that. Man, that was oh one night band. I think I think it was about it was about a twenty thousand dollar night. Well, wow. so well, I was going to ask yeah. that. You know, kind of what kind of pots you would win? Oh man, yeah, uh, like like on, in July, that's a, that's that's the biggest single night event. You know, biggest money night, single night. However, like Winfield. Like that week long deal, oh man, I've, in 2020 was my best year in Winfield. Uh, Goose won the one dog. Crow got first and second in the two dog. Goose got fourth and fifth in the two dog. 
Goose ended up winning the high point and the best of the best behind that. And, man, I, I left out of there with a little over $70,000. Dang. It was, it was a, it was a, it was a pretty, uh, pretty profitable week. I'd say. say. I'd say. Yeah. Now, what, what kind of entry is it, you know, for that? Uh, the, 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 back then it was $100. For the one dog, and I believe a hundred, hundred for the two dog, or it might have been, it might have been eighty for the one dog and a hundred for the two dog. Um, I mean, it's 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 affordable for anybody. And man, the, like 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 I said, the two dog we had close to four hundred entries. You know, you, you do the math on that, and you see how much money's in the pot, and uh, it pays out first and fifth. So yeah. you you put you put up a hundred bucks, you end up fifth place, and you get to come up, you're you're walking away with a couple thousand bucks. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty sweet gig, Gary. Now, oh, yeah. uh, all right, so let's start at the beginning as far as what, I guess, is there rules? Let's go that route. Yeah, I mean, it, the way the way they, uh, like a lot of people, that's that's one of the biggest things I get on TikTok, too, as well. Is like, how do they, how are they scored? How, how are the dogs scored? The dogs are just scored on mainly two criteria, control and concentration. So... The dogs have to maintain eye contact at all times, uh, and they have to maintain control. And, you know, it doesn't mean that the hog can't break and run. It, they are stopping the hog, you know, whatever they have to, like, like there's, there's many ways, there's several different ways to stop the hog. You can grab him and let go, or you can cut him off, like, like herd the dog. Yeah. So, uh, but like, so things that would break the rules is like, say the hogs, some, some of the hogs will come out and they'll just be oblivious to the dog. They're not paying no mind. They'll just walk around and do what they want. If the dogs don't do anything to stop them, then they're going to get it done. Uh, if a dog gets bored and looks back at its owner or looks around and looks up at the crowd, looks anywhere, he looks anywhere other than the hog, that's a deduction. Uh, you know, you obviously you can't pee or poop in the pen. They don't want you defecating in the pen. Uh, things like that. Uh, you know, sometimes the hogs will run at the dogs, and the dogs will run and turn turn around, turn a circle. That's a deduction. You, you, they got to uh, that, and that's what makes Goose so special. He doesn't typically turn out. Like if a hog runs at him, he'll just step to the side, or he'll show him, show him like he's he'll stay in front of him, and if they keep coming, then he'll just stop. It. Uh, and then as he's letting them go by, he'll grab them and spin them right back around and face them. So he does those things, and that's what, that's kind of what the, I mean, he does, he does a few things that you just don't see other dogs doing. And if you do see somebody do it, you just don't see them do it very often. Like, you know, I've seen a couple other dogs do the same move that he's kind of made famous, but he may do that six times in one run where you might watch another dog run six or seven times you, you might see him do it once yeah so it's just it, it's it's about control concentration and uh maintaining control now it, the they're hog. deducted if they're not at all times making eye contact with the hog correct yeah they, they can't look away uh, what if I mean, they if, spin if all the way around? Like, if their head is off that hog for one second, like while they're spinning. That's, 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 yeah, that's a deduction. Okay. A deduction. So they gotta if yeah, they if want the to hog, turn, they gotta the turn back. To, if the hog was to hit them and flip them up in the air or something like that, and they lost eye contact, that's not a deduction. But if they choose on their own, and the dog chooses to lose eye contact without the hog, you know, touching. Now, I mean, sometimes a dog will slip down and lose eye contact. Well, that's still a deduction. You know, you gotta, it, you know, the hog didn't cause you to lose eye contact. That's... Yo, I, I'm I'm extremely fascinated with this, and I, I'm asking a lot of questions that I already know the answers to, just because other people are not going to know these answers. But you, I've heard you say that you talk you talk to your dogs during the run. So you can, you have certain words or gestures that you do that. Yeah. And, and, and most of that, I mean, most of that is voice inflection. Uh, 
you know, a dog don't always know exactly what you're saying, but he knows the tone of your voice. And so, and that's the main thing, you know, if a hog gets, when a hog's getting after him, you get loud, and uh, it'll, it'll sure make you key up on the hog, you know. Uh, doesn't always work, but uh, for the good ones, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll really key up whenever you get after them, you know. Uh, and, and, and sometimes, you know, during those long, thrown out bays, like I'll be in an eight minute bay off and that hog will just go dead still. And he, I mean, the hog will just back up in the corner and not move. People don't realize how difficult that can be to bay and get a perfect score on because those dogs are getting bored too, you know. They just stand there barking at him. Yeah. Like, hey, like, this sucker ain't doing nothing. We, we just gonna stand here and bark at him, or y'all gonna come get him, you know? Now, and, uh, a lot of, in that situation, yeah. if a dog, if a hog is backed into a corner and a dog's just barking right there at him, as long as he stays active, I mean, that's a good thing. Yeah, as, long I mean, as, as long as that dog maintains eye contact throughout that bay, he's gonna get a perfect school. Those are, you know, for, for some of the, the great dogs, those are your easy runs. Because, you know, some of these also make you work. I mean, from, from the time you, they, from the time they turn him out to the time it's over, your dog's having to work nonstop. The more your dog has to work, obviously, the more opportunities he's going to have to make a mistake, like turning out, spinning around, and stuff like that. So, I mean, ideally, yeah, you want to draw one that sits still, you know, um, uh, you want him to make. You want your dogs to make him sit still. However, some hogs just aren't walking, and uh, they'll 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 come they'll come meet you in the middle. You get your dogs got to work, and that's kind of what has separated you know the top three percent of dogs is the ones that can still get a perfect score on those hogs that make you work. We got quite a few of them that can bait for six minutes and not look out. You know, they can just sit there and bark at But we have very, very few dogs can handle that hog that comes to beat them in the middle, and the hogs that run down the wall and don't want to pay attention. Because you got to stop that hog, and then sometimes stopping the hog, you got to pay, a, your dog's going to pay the price for stopping. And that that means he can get wrecked or, you know, flipped up in the air, knocked down, whatever the case may be. But uh, those are the ones that are, th- those, those are difficult. Those are your difficult rounds. And the dogs that can get through those rounds, eventually they're going to draw the good one, you know, and it's going to make it, you know, then it makes it easy. So every now and then it's nice to draw that, get through that one round, you know, where it's easy. Yeah. Now, I got so many questions I want to ask. I'm trying to figure out the order I want to ask them in. I want to talk, I guess, while we're talking about hogs, these are big hogs. How big a hog do you normally bay? Oh, uh, two. They, they, we don't bay anything under about 220 pounds. Uh, some of them are up to 400 pounds. But 220, I'd say 220 to 280 are your average. Every now and then you'll get one up to about 300, 330. And uh, your two dog hogs, there's probably, you know, they're, they're from probably around 280 to 330. And then Every now and then you'll get a big 400 pound one, but not not very often. And these um, these hogs are pretty rank, ain't they? Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, a lot of people think we we just dog these. You know, like I, I hear a lot of you get a lot of criticism from from guys that hunt in the woods because they don't they don't know what we do. Uh, you know, everybody that has a pin dog also has woods dogs that they hunt with too. But not everybody that has a woods dog has competition pin dogs. I mean, we're, we we we're probably 3% of the population, you know, overall, you know, but so a lot of, a lot of guys that don't know, they think, Oh, we just got these pin raised hogs, man. These hogs were caught in the woods, usually trap caught. Some of them have never seen a dog in their life. Don't even know what one looks like until we turn him out in that pen. Yeah. They're, 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 they're nasty. Well, uh, well I heard you say on another podcast that, I mean, they they know how to fight a dog, whereas normally in the woods, yeah. that's the first dog for the most part that them hogs has probably seen. So they're kind of yeah. they don't know the tricks well, and tips to get a dog caught up. 
That's that. That's correct. Uh, some of these hogs that have been that you know, like I said, we got some that's been there a while. They're just really smart. They're dog smart, and uh, those are the ones you don't want to draw. It's I, to me, I like I can draw that fresh one because he just he don't know the things to do to trap my dog. My dog's smarter than him. He's seen my dog has seen hundreds of hogs, and he's never seen one under 220 pounds. So <laughs> he's allowed to go grab up a 50, 60 pounder. Yeah. I mean, like when, when I get those comments, like, Oh, he wouldn't make it a day in the woods. I'm like, how can you honestly say that? Like do you, I, I've hunted, I've hog hunted from the, I don't, I don't hog hunt as much now as what I used to. But when I was younger, I was mad at them hogs. I hunted every weekend, if not for, for years on end. And I can't, I can probably count on one hand how many times I caught a hog over 200 pounds. So, I mean, like, most of my hogs were anywhere from 100 to 150 pounds. And that's a big hog in the wild. Yeah, I mean, it was, I I thought it was, I mean, shoot, I was having a good time catching. (laughs) But, I I mean, for for them to say, like, like, I mean, he's going to, he would do just fine in the woods. I'll say that. He would do absolutely just fine. Will we ever find that out? No. No. I'm not going to take a dog that I'm winning $300,000 a year doing what I love to do and go hunt that dog for what to prove a point to some hillbilly that don't have a clue as to what I'm doing. <laughs> Amen. Not you know, I mean, I, I love hog, hog hunting and I love a good wood stuff. I admire them all to death. The last thing you're going to hear me doing is hating on somebody's woods dogs. But sometimes after reading a, a mess of comments, I'm like, I want to just get on one of them, Hog hunting, you know, one of them guys is hunting page, and every time his dog looks out while he's baying the dang hog in the woods, he's like that sucker never make it in the pen. He wouldn't win you a dollar. You know? <laughs> like nobody gives a shit. <laughs> you know, nobody cares. Uh, and that, you know, that's not what he's that's not what he's there to do. You know, I know I know that dog. I mean, every let, let, let me just add, I mean, everybody that I know that hog hunts has a good woods dog. Like everybody's yep. got, I, I mean, I, I I got a buddy of mine over in Louisiana. He's got seven dogs he can put on the ground, and any one of them go find you a hog. My other buddy here in Orange, he's got three or four of them that if he drops on the ground, they're gonna go find a hog. You know, I, I know a pile of people with good wood stuff. I don't know very many people that can go out there and bay an eight minute perfect score. Yo. I now, I, 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 can, I, can, I can't even count on one hand how many dogs can do that right now. Let me ask this question. Does anybody take their pen dogs and put them in the woods? Do you know anybody that actually does that? There, there's a few, but they're not, they're not dogs that are – they, they can go and compete in the pen. I mean, there's one thing to say, call him a pen dog. I mean, just because he can go out and buy a perfect score and get you to the second round doesn't – doesn't mean he's going to win you any money. I didn't know if there was some but, dogs that could do both decent, you know. There's, there's, not a, there's not a dog in the top ten that hunts. Yeah. That, that, that's a, that, that, they can, that they definitely not consistently hunt. Okay. I mean, I know, I, know, I, know, I know one or two that have hunted, you know, and I can't, I, I, they don't hunt anymore. You know, do, uh, do, once, once they once they start winning a lot of once they start winning the real money, their their job is their 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 days in the woods are done. You know they're they're not gonna they're not gonna go run like I the the goose's mama was a wood dog, uh, but once she started being perfect scores, her days of hunting that was it. But like she's she ain't hunting. Yeah, because she would bay, she'd go out and bay you a four six minute perfect. Okay. I mean, that, you, you, you ain't going to find many dogs that can do that. So, let me ask this. Does most dogs start off in the woods and they really show you something that looks good so people try them in a pen and, and then work them like that, or do they start off as pen dogs? M- most most in, in what we do, they all start. Like everybody's breeding like they're good pen dogs to their good pen dogs. And what ends up happening is, is when they show you something like that, they, like if they go, they have a bad lookout, uh, they're just a nine, nine dog. They're not going to win you any money. Then they bring those to and start hunting. So typically our, our pen coals are our wood dogs. Okay. And 
and and most of them, man, it take it would take a, I mean, not many dogs that are game driven are going to ignore the senses of their nose, you know. So yeah. for people to say that these pin dogs can't make it in the woods is absurd. They could, they're they're great they're great woods dogs because mainly they can control a hog better than most of the good the dogs that have great noses, you know. I'm not saying that they're going to go out and hunt. Uh, a mile out and no hog sign, you know, I'm not saying they're going to do that, but if you hog hunt and you you have good, you have hogs around you, you know, you put them on the ground and give them a, a, a six, eight hundred yards, they're going to, if they, if they cross the track if that's hot, they're going to go find the hog. Yeah. I, 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 my, my dog, fanboy, he's Goose's full brother. Um, he was, he was, you know, doing real good in the pen. He was still real young, and uh, a bunch of my buddies were going hunting. I just grabbed him and loaded him up. I said, I bet he'll go hunt. And their dogs rolled out. They were probably 800, like, by the time. They, they were together at about 600 yards. And then after that, their them dogs, they had a lot of hound in them. They kept on rolling, and mine had peeled off. He went about 600 yards to the to the west. They were still headed north. And then he started coming back, and I was like, well, I guess he, you know, he just wasn't going to, he ain't that kind of dog, you know, he wasn't going to roll out like that. As he's on his on his way back, I hear the the woods crashing. And the next thing you know, I look up, and there's about a 100-pound hog running, and he is right behind an eight made of sound. He is, he is wide open. And the next thing you know, we cross the little canal, and him and another, uh, uh, he ran, basically the hog ran right back to us. And some buddies had, had other dogs in their box, and they, they cut them loose as they saw the hog, and we ended up catching that hog. But my dog was on that. He peeled off. So them hounds, they're like a track dog. They're going to yeah. take one track, and they're going to finish that one track. Mm-hmm. As to where he's, he's with you, but he's like, hey, there's something way hotter over here. He peels off and goes and gets the hog close to him. I mean, I ain't say it might have been luck, man. He might have just run up on that sucker. I don't know. But I, but I, but I do know this. He's he's going to be Goose's partner at the next band in October, and he's found one in the woods. Yeah. On his first trip, first trip he ever went, he found a hog. So, <laughs> so, I, I feel like if you put these, if you expose these dogs different, they're going to be they're going to be great at whatever they do. So I guess one of the things that fascinated me is most people on the that listen to this podcast hunt one sort of trained dog or the other. So it's either a hound or a cur. Uh, but goose is a cur, correct? Yeah. He's a kind of hula cur dog. Okay. Do, do you mind telling us kind of how he's built size wise? No, he's, he's about a, he's just under 60 pounds. He, he, he fluctuates about between 85 and 57 pounds. And, uh, he, uh, he's, I mean, he's a he's very muscular, got big front shoulders, big deep chest. Um, I mean, he's not like, uh, I don't know, you can see the pictures of him on Facebook. Uh, well, well, tell us where you can find the pictures of him. Uh, uh just by, just, you get on Facebook and you type in Goose. Uh, there'll be a picture of me kneeling down, petting him, he's black and white dog. Uh, eat, TikTok, anywhere. You, you'll, you can kind of get a, if you go to TikTok, he's Goose3x, it's Goose XXX official. Uh, that's his TikTok page. Um, he's a good sized dog. He's, I mean, I've seen bigger dogs in the pen. I've seen much smaller dogs. I'd say he's just a good medium sized dog. Um, but he's got, you know, he's got lungs, and uh, you know, the, the, the he separates himself on Sunday. I mean, his his conditioning is just second to none. Like I've never seen, I have not found the breaking point of watching him just gas out. He's never, I never, I've never got that far. I've seen many, many dogs gas out, get tired, and go to making mistakes. Uh, he's never done that. I, he has a he has a motor on. Uh, I, you know, very 
and, and it's not like I go out and condition this dog and over and, and, and train him each and every week to get to get that. That's who he is naturally. He has got a natural motor. Some some dogs just start off with a better gas tank. He's one of the well, that's one of the things I was wanting to ask is, do you train him uh, during the week to do this, or is this just natural? Uh, he does not see hogs uh, until he's in competition. Now, I have I do swimming. I exercise him while swimming. Uh, and not a lot, man. It's not, it's, you know, I do keep him on like a 20-foot chain during the day. And uh, he 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 kind of keeps himself in shape on that chain a little bit, and uh, then I'll take him and put him in the uh, I put him in the pond. I got a trolley system. I run him out, and uh, I'll swim him, uh, you know, here and there. Not 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 near as much as what you would think I would, but I, I, I as a matter of fact, I got a bait in October, and he has to swim. As a matter of fact, he has to swim at all this year. The pond was so hot. My buddy Mark Hayes, uh, he wanted to see how my system works, so he comes to the house, and uh, I rolled him out in that pond. And Mark, man, he, he doesn't know him. He's crazy. He ran and jumped in that. He he stripped down his whitey tights. He jumps in the pond, uh, and, and and he's like, man, this water's hot. You get that dog out of here. But, yeah, <laughs> we had a real dry spell with no rain for a long time, and water was pretty hot. So I haven't been – conditioning me at all really just uh i need to he, he's a bit overweight right now uh, we've had a lot of lightning storms and when it's when it's raining and lightning now he comes in the house i'm uh, i'm too scared something bad's gonna happen with that lightning. <laughs> Well, on one of our podcasts, we actually talk about dog insurance so that might be something you might be interested in looking into you ain't here why the only insurance plan I got right now is I got straws off of him, and uh, I got some skin cells collected in case I got a cloning one day. <laughs> so, so you, so you did get him pulled? <laughs> yes, sir. He's pulled. He's got. I got. Uh, I got. A, I got two banks. One, one bank is pulled with a hundred straws, and uh, his second bank has got thirty six minutes. Uh, I'm gonna try to live cover him until. And I, and I have not bred this dog. I, you know, people have asked me, well, what's he produced? You know, like, uh, like that matters more than what he's won. But, uh, like, he's got one puppy on the ground. That's it. And that one puppy he has on the ground, he will be baying in October. He's, uh, I think he's about 10, 11 months old right now. And he's looking pretty good, looking pretty prominent. So, so are you going to just – keep it in house or are you gonna to breed to the public? Man, I, I breed uh I breed to anybody. Yeah. Uh I have a I have a twenty five hundred dollar stud C on goose. Um you know some of these people that have good competition dogs that are good well bred dogs we we might work something out a little different, you know. Uh, I I bred him to actually two dogs and didn't charge a stud C because I was needing some puppies and I don't have I don't have any gyps that are not so closely related to him that I can breed him to, you know. So I was, you know, I've been in the kind of in the hunt for doing some outside breeding as, as of, even as of today because of, you know, because of that. I, uh, I, I had Goose's mom and I had Goose's daddy and I bred them every time he come in, you know, trying to recreate, you know, uh, that dog. And, uh, I don't know if you're, interested in it but we have a podcast on here with a guy that breeds feists actually from your area he's from louisiana down there but which is closer than you than me but anyways he lion breeds and he said that's the only way he could find to get what he wanted half sister half brother uh daddy daughter i mean yeah. he was breeding and he has had a lot of success doing that now you know depends on what you want to but anyways his name's jody mullins he breeds a lot of dogs and a lot of these guys do that yeah oh yeah line breeding is what we're we're, we're all doing the same thing i mean i bred daddy daughter but 
if I've already like, but I know what I what I have is I don't have is like full sisters. I I, I mean I don't have half sisters to go. I have full sisters, and the only thing I bred daddy daughter to was Goose's litter mate sister. So I couldn't go right back. Like, like it, that would be. I'm not saying I could. I guess I could, but I feel like I'm uh I'm uh, you know breeding brother to sister. Yeah. Full brother, full sister. It's a little close. You're kind of, you're kind of, you're kind of playing with fire there. And uh, now I could breed him to his mama. Now, now, see, Goose's daddy passed away here, you know, back in May. Uh, uh, well, no, not back in May. When was that? It, I mean, it's been a few months ago. He passed away. Uh, so I lost Crow. I lost uh, two-time best of the best world, uh, best of the best champion in the world, Perjury. Uh, and uh, I lost Smokey, which Smokey was retired. I mean, he he was retired. And then I then I also lost my my best my, my I lost all my partners. As a matter of fact, this year it's been a lot of adversity. Uh, you know, one guy went out and spent a hundred. He, he he offered me a hundred sixty thousand dollars to buy a goose, and I told him no. So he went and spent a hundred twenty thousand dollars on Goose's partners to uh, he, you know I figured. <laughs> The best way to kill the king is to to get his best men. So uh, he, he he went he went for the jugular on that. Hey, I mean that's that's part of it too, man. I can't fault him for for doing that. I mean that's you know part of that's part of the game, I guess. So, but he done it to bring down the king and uh, it backfired. I got I went and got another partner. We won the two dollar shootout. So okay, so. Let's, let me ask this question. While we're talking about breeding these dogs, are y'all, I guess, where am I going with this? Do y'all look for a certain line of dogs and keep breeding to them? Or if they're just good pen dogs, you breed them to the good pen dogs? Most, most everything you see is really no secret. Uh, Otis Weems, he, he just passed away here about a month ago, he had been breeding dogs, uh, hunting dogs, pen dogs, and he was really, really good at it. I don't know everything that that man did, but I do know that he, his line of dogs have, for me, have worked out. Uh, uh, Goose is out of uh, Curly and uh, a dog named BB. BB was a uh, was owned by John Harrison, which actually Otis owned the dog. He sold it to John uh, when he got out of the bit. When he got out of the, 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 you know, he got he got up in age and health was declining, and he sold all of his dogs. And John bought BB. BB won the one dog and multiple two dogs. And Curly was a multi, you know, two time Hump World's best of the best high point dog, uh, real good dog. So that's the parent. That's the grandparents to, to Goose. And then, of course, the Wings, Wings line has been probably the most dominant line in our competition. And not only that, but they hunt, too. They, they really do exceptional in the woods as well. I, I, I've never seen a more versatile dog than those dogs. Uh, but... Hello. Hello, I lost you. Hello. Hey, hey, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I lost you there for a minute. You. Yeah, you might lose me again, but I'm almost home. Yeah. And it's going to, um, when I get there, I got a Wi-Fi signal, so you won't lose me again. I got you. So, so you said that that man sold out because he got older and his line of dogs yes. seemed to be what helped work the best. Yes, absolutely. They're, they're the most versatile dog in my opinion for exactly for especially for what we do but everyone i've ever had that that's left my house that went to hunting homes just the people that wanted to hunt i have never had one come back never had one come back now have how did you get into this well I, a lot of people don't realize this me and jake Lloyd cano who owns tallband.com. We trained and did jujitsu together, and uh, we were both MMA fighters uh, in our, you know, when we were in our early 20s. Well, 
he always had competition pin dogs, and I always hunted. And I, I would always pack up and go hunting with Jake. And then, uh, you know, one day he's like, hey, man, you need to come to the place with me. Yeah, we just can't go to the place. Hello. Hello. Yes, oh, yes, sir. You can you hear me? There you go. Did I lose you? No, I, I couldn't hear nothing. Uh, it's what it what it was. I went to. The, I had to open my gate to get in my to I get in the to get in the ranch here. But uh, I forgot that I was on my my Bluetooth <laughs> car. <laughs> I got you. So, but so yeah, I so lost Jake you. I lost you at the part where. You said that y'all was MMA fighting and he was training pen dogs and you was hunting so you'd load up and go with him. Yeah, I I I, I was always hunting. He had hunting dogs too. But one day I loaded up and went to one of them bay pen competitions because he's talking about, he's like, man, they got cow cutters there. You can win your little money, you know. You can go and buy some cow cutters and stuff like that. And I said, well, shoot, I'm going to do that. Well, little did he know I was going there and I was going to buy his cow cutters. Because he's been the one winning all the time, you know. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know nobody else's dog. So I bought some of his cow cubs, won some money. And then uh, he ended up buying a pen in Village Mills. And uh, he put on his own event. And I went there just to play the cow cub. And uh, I kept, you know, I did that. But so so obviously I had some, some money invested in it. So I was watching the dogs. And I just, man, I, I like to watch a dog work. I really just appreciate any dog that does his job well. If I went duck hunting, I could just sit in the duck blind and let everybody else shoot just so I could watch the dog. I couldn't have said it better myself. I love it. I, yeah, and that's, that's I, I don't, like, like I said, I, I love watching the dogs work. And, uh, you know, at first, you're kind of looking, and, and, and it's like just looks like, oh, all right, two dogs just barking at a hog, you know? But then when you see one of them hogs that come out and makes it makes the dogs work for it, and you see how well they can work, you can really just appreciate the talent that these dogs have. And that's kind of what, you know, got me started. I was just playing Calcutta, and then I was like, man, I need to get a dog. I got to do this, you know? It's just kind of like how it is when you go hog hunting first time you know you go out there with your buddy's dogs and he's they go out there and, and, and the first time you run into a bay and you leg a dog and leg a hog and flip him and tie him it's like man i got then you next thing you know you're out shopping for dogs you know <laughs> you want to get your own dogs to do the same thing that they're doing so it kind of started that way I, I i just started going and watching and then uh, i bought a couple dogs and uh I met John Harrison. He owned, he used to dominate Uncle Earl's, you know, and uh, I really just enjoyed watching how his dogs work. And I ended up buying a couple of dogs from him, and that's where Goose comes from. I bred them two dogs. And I, well, I bred, actually, it wasn't, the mama wasn't one of John's dogs, but CJ was the, was the daddy. Bred them two dogs, and then the next thing you know, uh, this, phenom emerges and uh they call him Luke. He's, you know he's a three-time world champion right now no dogs even won it back to back there's only been one other dog that's won two world championships his name's gator but goose won them back to back he's actually won three straight in the lead right now going into the last show if he holds on it'll be four consecutive world championships and Man, to, to a lot of people, that may not sound like much, but the reason why it's not done back to back, the reasons why you don't have many other multi champion, world champion dogs, is because of the, the, the beatings these dogs have to take in order to win just one is usually enough to cause a mistake where they're not near as dominant, you know, for the next years coming up. And I, that's why I said I don't, I haven't found any weakness. Everybody, you know, if I, if you listen to anybody 
talk about competition bait dogs, they're going to tell you, oh, man, every one of them's got a, got a weakness somewhere. I like for them to tell me where, where Goose's weakness is because I haven't seen it yet. So, so I guess throughout the year, how many dogs – do you think are in one of these competitions? I mean, that compete for the world title. There's relatively about 600 and something entries at every show. And some of these are two dog events. So, I mean, it, if you count just the dogs, individual dogs themselves, uh, I bet there's, man, that, that'd be hard to, Hard number to, I mean, I bet there's more than a thousand. A lot. Well, well more than a thousand dogs that, that yeah. sh- you know, different dogs that show up and compete at, you know, at different venues. There, there's thousands. Yeah. Now, so is there any way that you train a dog in this sport or is it just more or less if it's got it, it's got it? Well, it's a little bit of both. Uh, I'm not going to say there's, it's, it's not zero. Obviously, there's some training, but it's, I wouldn't necessarily just call it training because you can't teach that dog to stare and you can't teach that dog to not spin a turn, turn away from the hog. But you can expose that dog correctly, which is basically kind of like if you were training a bucking bull, you want to try to build his confidence. Yeah. You got to kind of do, you you do the same thing. You you can't go out there when they're you know 4 5 6 months old and put them on a hog that can hurt them because you'll ruin them. You know they they're not they're not mentally capable of handling a hog like that and you're setting that dog up to lose. So, you know, you you're just not going to get you you can't get anything out of a dog doing him that way. But you expose them the right way. And that don't mean that he's going to be perfect. It don't mean he's going to make it. But you at least give you at least giving the dog the opportunity to make it. If you expose him the right way, he's going to choose his job, whether he can do this or not. Yo. And they, the ones that can't, we go and then we then we try them in the woods. Is there anybody that I guess has like a practice pen? That oh yeah yeah that do but you don't you don't your dog is this he he sees well, them at competition. Yeah, I have, but I still have a practice pen here for for my puppies. Goose don't see; he's not. And they, when they're baying, when they're doing it right, when they're doing their job right, practice is over. You just keep them in shape. You just keep them in shape. Now, I've heard you actually say on the other podcast that hogs are different depending where you're at. Like, like I guess their demeanor. You said in Georgia well, they was different than I guess in. Louisiana. Well, Georgia is kind of they're kind of they're kind of limited on options. So something happened with the state of Georgia, and they have to test these hogs for. Um, I think it's like they, they got they got some tests. I'm not sure exactly what they're testing for, but like whatever it is they're testing for, ninety percent of the hogs that you catch in the woods all have it. Uh, you know, you might find one out of three that, that it would test clean. Every one of them have it, but they cannot, they're not, they're not contagious unless they're sick. So if you don't take care of your hogs, yes, you could potentially expose a dog that could to, to, to some sort of disease that could kill them. I want to say they call it pseudo rabies or something like that. Some like most, most all hogs carry that. They're, they're carriers of it, but unless they're a sick hog, they can't get your dog sick. So we have, uh, so, so the state of Georgia is, they're, they're like, they're, they're locked under these guidelines. They, they can't, they can hardly even have a bay in now. Like the, the bands have disappeared in Georgia, but the hogs over there that they had to test it clean. So if they get a hog test clean. They just, they got to keep it because they don't have any other options. Some of these hogs might only weigh 140, 150 pounds. Well, I can't bait my dogs over there. They're, they're going to get too, way too rough with a hog that small. They're used to seeing 220 to 300-pound hogs. So 
they're not going to be, you know, it's, it's not a place I can be successful. <laughs> yeah. Now, how close, I guess they can, I've seen they can grab them and hold them for five seconds or. Yeah. After five seconds, they're disqualified. If they hold on for longer than five seconds, they're disqualified. So, so how, I guess, how close do these dogs try to get without grabbing? Like within a, a foot, within a few inches? Well, it, honestly, it really just depends on the hog I'm baiting. If that hog comes out and he's, you could tell he's a bad hog, Deuce may bay that sucker at three and a half to four foot. If that hog's not showing anything, like if Goose reads that hog right off the bat and he realizes, oh, this hog's not going to be too bad, he'll slide up in there and he'll bay six inches off his head and you know, and, and usually put on a real good show because he'll bay real tight and the hog will feel pressured and the hog will come out and he'll get to dance with him, you know, so to speak. He gets to, that's when it's fun. I, yeah. For me, I, that, that's the, those are those rounds that I enjoy watching. Um, I, I, that's, I mean, that's what I like. I, what? I'm at a point, that, yeah, I mean, he's at a point now where he's won enough for me. I, I just want to see him perform well. Yeah. What drew me to it is I was stumbling through TikTok and I'm like you. I like to, if we're watching rabbit dogs, I want to see a rabbit dog do its job well. If we're, I'd run squirrel dogs and we hunt deer dogs and I want to see a dog do a good job. Well, I saw this dog, which happened to be Goose, in that pen and man, he was dancing around that hog and that hog was chasing him. And that hole yeah. could not get a hold to him. Big hole. Yeah. And I just, I was absolutely amazed. And I think that was before you got the last page took down. You had quite a few videos up. And that sent me into a spiral on TikTok yeah. of looking for for this dog that's called Goose. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and it, it is absolutely amazing to watch him. I mean, he's so athletic. It blows my mind. Yes, sir. And, Thank and, you. I, and he don't even look like he tries is what gets me. Yeah, and, and that's that's kind of um, – I have a movie trailer that I made. Like I, like I had it's, – it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of like a little highlight reel, but it's like a movie trailer. Well, I did a couple voiceovers, and you hear one guy say, you know, he's like – he's like he, 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 he floats around the arena like it's effortlessly. And I, I, he's just so – cat-footed is what i'd say i mean he's just he he is very very athletic very agile very light on his feet and it's yeah i mean he's literally the that's the that's the you know in this in, in this in this sport he's the perfect dog he's exactly yeah. what you want he is I, I i could not be more proud of that dog than what i am he's done so much so so surpassed all expectations i i could have ever thought that a, that a dog could accomplish well and i could see if they judged them on like i don't guess i've looked over the rules or or some of the what they're judged on but i didn't see anything that was in there on hustle but if they judged him off of hustle even though i know he's hustling he don't yeah. look like he's hustling so it would probably hurt him you <laughs> know because he don't look like he's having to try he he looks like an NFL player playing with a bunch of Pee Wee football players. Yeah, somebody. They, I've heard somebody use the analogy: he's a man amongst boys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, exactly. And it's a good thing that they don't judge him off of what it looks like effort, because even though he's putting forth effort, man, oh, yeah. it, it's amazing to watch him dance around that hole. Yeah, so, uh, that's 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 what's made him. You know, that's what's kind of brought the attention to him is because I, I've captured all those moments. I've got every run on a video since the time he was five months old. Well, uh, do you have anything on YouTube or anything like that that people could see? I do have some YouTube videos. I don't post a lot to YouTube. Most of, most a lot of my stuff is on Facebook. Uh, I've got just, I mean, I've got piles and piles. You can watch hours of video footage on Facebook because those don't typically get banned. <clears throat> Now, are those under Goose or are those under your name? What what are it's those? It's under Goose. Goose has his own page. And and you said TikTok was X. Uh, yeah, it's Goose XXX official on TikTok. I gotta I gotta make up new names every time he gets. Yeah, back, this so. is what the third or fourth time you've been knocked off of 
<laughs> oh, no, it's been way more than three or four. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> yeah, it's, how many, is such a soft map. I, I, it, it's aggravating. How many earlier did you tell me views you had on a video? I had a 5.5 million I got in, in a week on one of Goose's videos. Some of his Facebooks, he's got several that's got like, one of them's got 2.8 million on Facebook. And wow. There's some others that's got a couple million, but most of the face, the Facebook, it take, I don't know what it is. It don't, it don't always get huge right off the bat on Facebook. Like it's like TikTok does. That's one. That's the reason why I like the platform. It does do better as far no. as get cat views and an audience. Well, so people the, have to specifically be looking for goose. Whereas on TikTok, like I ain't never heard of goose. I actually, to be honest, a hundred percent honest, I didn't even know that there was a, such a thing as a hog bay pen. I know people that hog hunt with dogs. But, right. Like, if you're not in that community, you don't know. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, man, this dog's awesome. I need to look at more videos of this because of a random video suggestion. So, that's that, and that's that was that was the goal that I had, man. I I set out. I was like, man, I, I want this dog. I mean, like I seen the the talent he had. And I was like, I want everybody in the world to know him. I want him to be the Michael Jordan of his sport. You know. Yeah. Uh, and on and TikTok, you had a bunch of followers on one of your pages. How many did you say you had? I had 220,000 and it got banned. And then I had, you know, like I said, that was where I had that one video that went like 5.5 million in a week. And uh, it's, it's been banned. I've, I've, I've had this new one up for about a week and it's up to about 5,000 followers now. So, um, but I've already been like warned. I'm like, I'm under a, a, a 10 day ban right now. I can't post for another 10 days or comment or do anything because, uh, yeah. you know, one, some, 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 some Karen probably decided that we were, you know, they, they think we're being mean. Yeah. What they don't realize is, man, these hogs were rescued off of crop farms. They were going to be shot out of helicopters. They were going to be left in a field rotten to die. Now they've been, now they're basically they're, they're living out their lives on a hundred acre hog sanctuary where they have plenty of food they're that they get antibiotics they get wormed when they, they're treated like livestock just like cows and, and they're treated and they're, they're treated disqualified if they dogs. hold on to them for five seconds exactly it, most of these dogs don't hold on for three seconds i think we went through we went through like a whole year where we didn't have more we, we you could count on one hand how many catch outs we had the dogs aren't catching. They're bred to not catch. We're not hurting these animals at all. It, it's it, it's so, <laughs> you know, but it doesn't matter. That's not the narrative that they want to sell. So they're not, it doesn't matter what I say or what I tell them. They don't care. The narr- they, they make up their own narrative as to what they want it to be. And they're, 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 they're going to go out and say this is a blood sport and we're fighting hog against dog. Nobody's fighting. <laughs> It's, it's the objective is to not touch the hog, you know, yeah. to, do, to do as little as, you know, as necessary, but or as, as much as necessary and as little as possible. So that's, that's the goal. So when you're talking about breed, you said earlier, you were talking about breeding these dogs mm-hmm. for, um, uh, what, like, what traits are you looking for? Athletic ability? Really? No. Uh, believe it or not, I like. I, you, I like to watch, like, it, when you watch the dogs that when they bathe the setup hog, you want a dog that plants his feet, that holds his ground, and doesn't sit there and swing and move a lot. Um, I like breeding to those kind of dogs, which I like. Also, I look at the pedigree. You know, I mean, I, I, I want to know who mom and daddy are, you know. But more importantly, I want a dog to plant his feet in the ground and just keep his eyes glued on that hog. And if they can do that for six minutes, I feel like they're worthy of breeding because it takes it takes a unique dog to, to sit there and stare at one too, you know, and not get bored. He's got a lot of prey drive. If he can stare at that hog and not get bored and look around. Uh, those dogs do better too because in like two dog events, you know, they're not running into their partners, you know, causing a, pr- a problem for the, one of their partners. So I want a dog to put, put his both feet in the ground and stand on his side and be confident. Uh, I feel like those dogs that move around a lot, it's usually a insecurity thing. It's a, and, and not all of it's insecure. It could be something in their paradigm. You know, something may have happened to them. 
you know. And that now, you know, like an object in motion is 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 it's harder to hit something that's constantly moving. Yeah. So that, a lot of dogs do that. I'm not saying it don't work. It, it ain't something I like to see. I want to see them stand on their side, hold their ground, and be confident. So my mind's <laughs> just running in all different directions. But right now, while we're talking about breeding, so the first question I've got is, do you only breed – bay good bay pen dogs to other good bay pen dogs or do you sometimes be like you know what that bloodline's worked in the past and there's a brood jip here let's breed her um it would just have to be circumstantial uh goose is the the puppy i have off a of goose is bred to a straight woods dog it's a yellow dog i mean i'm i'm talking about like i'm not breed specific i mean i if it if it if if that sucker can be purple with pink spots, if it can be a ten, I like it, you know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I bred goose to a yellow black mouth cur. It was a really good woods dog. She was a she's a wind dog. She can she used her nose really well, and she was a, just a good sized dog. I bred her. Uh, but what what out of her did you see that you wanted? Because you said she's a wood dog, but. At the time, it was just a, it was a uterus. That's what I needed. But oh. I did, I did, I, I, I do, I did want to put some some dogs out of goose that I knew was out of a good woods dog on the ground and uh, show that these dogs could hunt too. It was kind of I, I kind of had yeah. a little mix a mixed goal there. Yeah, wanted, you, you wanted to prove wanted, that that they can be woods dogs also. Oh yeah, and this dog that the puppy that I got out there at four months old, I about lost him. Because he hit the ground, he he got on the track, and was, it was it, it took me like six hours to find where that dog the collar the, the collar went dead. You know, it was one of those deals where oh, everything went wrong. Yeah, and I ended up staying out there till you know it was supposed to be just one of those we're just gonna cast the dog and <laughs> be back in two hours. And honey, it's I'm sorry the sun's coming up, but we still out here looking for that dog. <laughs> yeah, so. All right, now this next question: Puppies in a pen, you you breed or or just say some Joe Blow goes and wants to buy a puppy, gets a puppy at a too good pen dog. Mm -hmm. Would is there certain characteristics? Because in my mind, it's a pretty confrontational sport. So is there certain? I mean, not necessarily dog to dog, but a shy puppy in my mind is not going to want to run up on a 300 pound hog if for, for the most part. Well, it depends on what he's shot to. Well, so, but you know, okay. Is he shot if, at you or is he shot at a hog? That's well, it. you're obviously not going to know that when you're picking them out, but is there certain characteristics or things that they're doing in a pen that like, are you wanting the puppy that's knocking the rest of them off the food bowl? Are you wanting the one that's just, all over the place, athletic. Is there something that you're looking for? That well, I'll, t I'll tell you how I've 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 kind of come to some conclusions, but over just some experience. That I, does it make me right? Doesn't make me doesn't make somebody else right? But yeah, we're getting Randy secrets out here, guys. So pay attention. <laughs> well, I've seen I've seen some of the I've seen some really good puppies come, and they're the ones that are like you said. They're they're growling at the food bowl. They're knocking all the other dogs off. They're the most aggressive. I have seen that work probably more often than the dogs that are not. I'm going to tell you, Goose didn't want to fight. He, I could box him with anything. He don't care to fight. I, I feel like a dog that has confidence. You might not see it, you know, because he doesn't have to go and knock you off the food bowl. But he's confident. Yeah. He has got uh, – he is the most – he is very confident. He can, he, I can let him loose and he can come around a group of people and he is very confident dog in every aspect of life, no matter what it is. He doesn't feel the need to fight another dog. Kind of like, like the analogy of a guy in a bar, you know, the guy that's out there looking for a fight all the time, he probably ain't the baddest guy there. Yeah. The silent you one know? in the corner. Yeah. It's the guy that, that's confident that knows he ain't got to act like that. And then, He's like, you know, you leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. But if you, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that Goose, ain't, he's, he will fight if something, you know, bows up on him. He would, but he's not. I, I, I mean, there was a time when I, and, and Crow was the same way. 
crow didn't care to fight. There was a time when I was leaving the hall band late, and I'm loading dogs, and my old lady's loading dogs, and we're sitting around, and the next thing you know, I get back to the house, and I open the box, and I'm like, what goose? And everybody's like, like, I'm freaking out. I'm like, where's my dog? Where's goose? Where's goose? You know?